G'day, how you going? Are you an Apple Ski, you're a quick guru from Australia. Welcome to my video. Before I get started, I just want to put the size of the canvas up there. And I also want to get the colours going up the screen that I'm going to use in this tutorial today. Now this is a Harry Spheres painting that I'm doing. It's one you might have seen in the background of my Friday Night Lives where I sit down at my desk and I've got that big highway scene behind me. Well that's what I'm going to do today and I'm just going to show you beginners and other artists out there how I would paint it in some way how you can paint it right. So get on over here and let's get right into it. So I've drawn in the lines roughly here. This is down a little bit Okay, but if anything, that's our horizon area. It's not a horizon line. I've called it the area because that's the area. Okay, so this point here, I've looked at the picture. I will put this picture in the traceable links below. Okay, so you can find this picture and, and graph it out. And what you do, you look for the edges where all the lines meet at the edge to get it in your perspective here, 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 and just the highway lines. I'll show you what I mean by all that so as you can see this edge line there 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 and then roughly here where it's coming from the edge okay see so this is down a little bit stop and analyze it make yourself a cup of tea and analyze see you might think this is straight but if anything i want it coming down a tidbit just to give it that perspective that the road's going that way so there's my layout here, as you can see. Now, I want to start from behind and bring everything slowly coming forward to you. So I've got me putter on a brush and I want to lay that. There's no retarder in here. I just want this to make the paints flow across the canvas easier. It is a primed canvas. And I want to get the sky area just primed up with this craft white. Now, if you don't have any craft white, you can't find it. You're just having trouble whatever just go to a hardware store and use ceiling white for now until you get yourself going it'll help it's not the same but it's better than nothing now i'm going to stroke that left and right as i do just to get it nice and even and i'll quickly get my sky color on there now so down here i've got cerulean blue i've got a little bit of mid-tone gray and some quinacridone magenta so i'll get the sky on first He's is pretty much just black, green and white type of tones, but I'm going to go my way because that's what art's all about, making it your own. So I'll start at the top, crisscross it across the top. I've got this on a portrait layout. Now I'm coming down lower and lighter down the bottom here because I need this lighter area painted. So when I put the other polluted area on, I'm not trying to put it on this dark, heavy sky. And because it's dark there and light there, you get that sphere shape. Wow, hence the name Harry Sphere. And that looks fantastic. Just wipe the brush, pick up the grey and a little bit of that quinacridone magenta just to get that hue there. And if you, because we want that polluted area in the bottom of the sky. So I'm going to come right across here. I'm going to use my brush and crisscross it in there like so. That white craft paint underneath is allowing this to move. See, this bit's dry, you can't do jack with that. And we'll get this up into the sky, just fading into that blue, okay? I'm quite happy with that. And if you want, you can quickly whack some clouds in. I put no retarder in it, because I wasn't gonna put any clouds. Let's see if we can get away for cloud. I've put no retarder in it, so it might be dry, so I won't do anything massively big. I'll grab this in my hog bristle fan brush and I'll think I'll come just from here somewhere, try and put something here. Leave the bottom hard. I'm just gonna see how this goes. Maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't have done this cloud. I'm using the corner of the fan brush, okay? And it's quite rubbery. I'm gonna grab the corner of my blending brush now and try and sit all that down tickle the tops and smear it a bit. It's only a small cloud, it's only a small sky, so I got away with it. But if I was doing a bigger size, I'd have trouble blending this. Now that looks like a flat cloud, which is fine. We've got to dimensionalize that. So back down here, I've got that white, but I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow into it. Not too much, just a very, very tiny bit. So you want it very white with a hint of yellow in it. And I love doing this because it adds some underlit lighting to your clouds. Now this cloud, 
we can add you know how I normally add the weather into it well this one here I'm just adding the yellow bits of yellow within there with the corner up there a bit there like that now I'm going to use a smaller brush to blend that because it's such a small piece so I want to keep the bottom and just push the top of that yellow into the cloud so we're leaving the bottom and pushing the top into the cloud like so so I've cleaned that hog bristle fan brush and now I'm going to load it up the same again nice and flat I call it ribbony because it's like a ribbon see it's like a ribbon and we'll just look for the top I'll do a little bit at a time because um, it's very dry so what I want to do now is I'm just adding vibrant bits of yumminess the white into the cloud where you could still see the faded first coat of the cloud and the yellow highlighting it up here look at that just put it on take your time smear that on there you got good quality paints and a good canvas you get way better results with your artwork and you'll learn that as you travel through your art journey I'm putting some dimension in the middle of the body of the cloud there as well and maybe just something up here getting hit because clouds are just formations being hit by light the sunlight and light and that's what creates the different colors in our clouds there we go we've got a simple effective cloud cl floating in the sky look at this i'm just going to put that there just because it adds a bit of dimension and i don't know softness and realism to your picture i feel there's something coming across there like that that's it leave it alone i'll scrumble the bottom of it down into that weathered color that's it now i've just found myself an old brush to mix because i find it see how soft that is it's softer to mix than a knife i just prefer that way i've got some cobalt blue and i've got that cronacrony magenta i want to mix up a darker value here till it get to the tone that i want just to put in some distant stuff before I put in the mid-ground stuff. So I'm just going to grab some of that craft white. This is in the distance. So it's got more atmosphere between you and it. Because we're going to bring some darker colour in front of this, okay? Because this is going to make up for this area here. I'm going to convert that into some distant trees. And these are closer trees on the side of the road. That's how I'm viewing this painting. And you can see this brush is mixing a lot softer and gentler than a knife on your hard palette. Now I'm going to grab the brush I want to paint my trees with, which is obviously a filbert. Because okay, so that's dry. So what I do is I'll, I've wet it, getting a tea towel or a cloth, and I'm just squeezing it dry now. So it's not, the paint won't stick to the bristles and you get hard dry paint on there. Now I'm going to simply pick up this distant colour here and from my road there I want to just put in some light coloured or my, well, as I call them filbert trees I'm going to kind of bring them in like this into the middle so I know my my road lines there you keep adding your lines back in you know your, your guidelines back in if you feel you have to and down the bottom I'm starting light but down the bottom it'll gradually get how high is he going? He's, he's got some, a lot of air in between. So I'm gonna go like that. And you can just see how you can mix, match and change things. That's gonna go about there. So see how I did that? Now get this all light first. Some a lot of air in there because I wanna see that polluted color I put in there. Sometimes we can get lost and do a lot of detail and paint over it with the next bit and you think, oh no, what did I do that for? along here i'm just sort of yeah he's is about i'm i'm making this my own anyway so i'm feeling quite happy and confident i don't have to sit there for magnifying glass making sure it's exactly the same just reference from it just take the time with your art and you create wonderful bullshit instead of lousy snot there we go okay we've come that far stop relax have yourself a coffee break. Always give yourself coffee and give yourself time to stop and analyze your work instead of rushing into the next bit because you can simply make an easy boo-boo and you've finished that and then you realize the boo-boo's there. So this is where you have a coffee break, sit down, have a vanilla slice or a sandwich, 
look at your work. You've got the whole damn day to paint the damn thing. So let's look at it. And I want this bush light stuff coming up next in front of that. So I'm just looking at the reference. Okay, I know I don't need to look at that anymore for this part of the painting. So I'm enjoying my coffee and I'm analysing my work. Because how many of you out there analyse your work and how many of you do not stop and do not analyse your work? I know I never did in the past, but I like to teach you now, it helps your work a lot when you do stop and analyse and have a coffee at the same time. So get on back over here when you finish your coffee and we'll get to the next bit, all right? So that's dry. I've had people telling me when they're detailing their trees, it's mixing up together. You can dry that to put the next layers on so they sit there. I don't do that with my sky because you need the colours to blend and merge. So now we're going to do this mid-ground piece. Using my soft mixer again, so I've got that blue there. I'll leave a little bit of the light colour there so you'll see the difference. Pick up that quinacridone magenta. And this is simply going to make the darker background for our trees. Now sometimes I've used that perylene green, but to get more realistic vibes, I'm using the three primary colours, which is your blue, your red, and obviously a yellow later on. So I wanna get this all dark enough for behind the trees there, and you'll see the difference. This isn't the tree colour, this is the background colour. And now I wanna load this up and I want to get the top area done first and then come down to the solid bit. So we're pretty much come off the painting. The, this is darker. Where are we? How dark is it? You can see I'll add a little bit more red just to get it a bit more darker. Have a look at that. Yeah, you can see. Now I'm coming off here, making the air in the trees, coming in front of that. Uh, where's it? And it's coming pretty much right down to a point in his one there. There we go. Bang. Right past our point. There's our line there. And I'm simply gradually... Oh, that's a bit thick and blobby. See this white paint I've got here? I've got to disguise that so any bits or holes are the sky colour, not white. Otherwise it'll look a bit iffity affity. So I'm going to gingerly cover up the white bits now with lighter areas. Down here's the edge of our road. And then all this now can be blocked in with the heavier paint. What I'm doing, I'm just straightening it up and down and make it more easy for my next brush strokes to go on. I'm going to do the same to the other side. So I'm bringing this line down. I don't want to draw a big line there because you'll see it. So I'm drawing the line in the shape of these branches there because that can be easily, more easily disguised as I'm lacing it through the sky there. So now I know where to bring my edge like here getting it more solid and then i'll whack it right in okay just finishing it off analyzing it finishing it now my lines here i've gone a little bit beyond them so we've got enough room to bring them up to the right height now everything on my canvas is dry ready to add the green oh that's my silver play button thank you for getting me to that milestone everybody so you're going to grab the blue that you use, which is the cobalt blue and the yellow ochre. And we're going to make a green. And also, I've got a little bit of um, cadmium yellow medium if I want to brighten it up, which I will be later on. So I'm grabbing my mixing brush again. So um, let's make this bit our green. So we start adding the blue into that yellow until we get the green that we want. And they're more earthy real colours because greens have a lot of dead value in them and this is adding that dead value as well. Now like I said before, look at my footprint, don't go too big. Grabbing our filbert brush again, we're going to load up our filbert brush and get our mid-ground colours in there. So we'll start on this side, I'm just going to come right off the painting and then tiptoe over that purpley colour, leaving some there. You just don't want the purpley on the edge of it. See how I'm bought, I've bought it beyond? There's the purple and the green's coming beyond it, if you know what I mean. Now, if it's your first time watching, watch the whole video so you'll know what you should and shouldn't do in this painting. And give me a comment and tell me where you're from and how you found me. It's always exciting to know where people found me. 
on how they found me on YouTube. I know they found me on YouTube, but how they were directed to me. Down to nothing and just beyond there, boom, right off it. That's all gonna get covered up later. Now we've got to try and create charisma within here, bits of dark pockets and this is coming all the way down to the road, so to speak. So I'm doing this side on camera so you'll see what the guru is up to. Just getting all this green there, leave some darkness at the bottom. Now that purpley color that we mix makes the perfect realistic dark values for your green trees. Different tones of that purple will create different darknesses. As you will see, there's a guy, Australian artist, I'm quite fond of, quite proud of the way he's developed himself in his art journey. And he does some wickedly wicked stuff, Australian scenes, bush scenes and that. And if you want to check him out, his name's Rod Moore. I think he's based in New Queensland. And he's got the Moore method of painting real life, like loose paintings of Australian landscapes and bits and bobs like that. Check him out and tell him that I sent you there to have a sticky beak and see what you reckon. I, 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 he's created his own way and he's got a lot of knowledge on the acrylic paints. He uses acrylics as well. Okay, we've done that. I'm gonna do the other side off camera. Now, as you can see, I finished this, it's like a khaki color green. That's the next layer. Now we'll put the next layer on top of this. See, I've left darkness there because that creates underness, underneathness of your bushes and shrubs. Okay, using my mixing brush, I'm grabbing some of the yellow cadmium and I'm gonna mix a brighter greener there now. So we're using this and we'll put a bit more blue to get the green vibe going. And it's what's happening is the, the green is changing value from the yellow and blue. So there we go, there, that's more of a khaki. Now hopefully this has gone more sap or forest greeny, but it's still got a bit of that in it. So a bit some more of this there. I'll wet my brush and put a bit of paint in it. There we go. And it's pretty much a real color. Now that's a bit too yellow green, so I'm gonna add a little bit more blue. And I'm just using the three primaries here. I've used the yellow, the red, and the blue. So far, I've used nothing else. Grabbing my filbert, everything on the canvas is dry again. So I know this is gonna sit on top of the color I've just put down. Don't hide all the khaki green. The khaki green's sort of like the dead vibe of it all and we're going to make our darker areas of this. Practice doing these trees, just get yourself a bit of old cardboard or canvas or something. Just paint a base color down like a sky color and practice doing trees like this and you'll find they are just easy, wonderful and satisfying to do once you, once you finally master them. But like I said, check out Len Hen and Rod Moore great Australian artist and I don't mind telling people about other people if that other person I'm telling them about is worthy of that direction because there are some artists out there that are okay but in my opinion if you're worthy of it you're worthy of it and we will continue this over this side as well, but I won't bore you with the camera work doing all this side. We'll use the magic of YouTube videography stuff to speed it up a bit, all right? Just about there, nice fine little taps with your brush, not big thick blobs like that way in the distance there. Now we'll just simply highlight all this. So to highlight it, I'm gonna grab the cadmium yellow and mix it into this pile. I need a bit of water in there. Now we don't want it too, too loud. Too loud can turn it cartoony. What you've just covered, you want to cover that with this colour about anywhere between 45 and 60 percentage, depending. Gingerly scatter this. Now when you're doing this section, this is the part where you squint your eyes or you look in a camera lens and kind of see where you can go with it and where what's starting to happen on your canvas there. I'm having a look now, I could see, so I want a little bit of light 
just cutting in from there a bit like there I just saw that instead of it being a solid darkness edge there you don't want that you want things coming right off your work having a look again and now I'm liking that it's kind of a realistic highlighted color it's not too cartoony what I mean by the word cartoony is, is when it just looks the colors there but it's wrong for the layout it's too bright too thick and try not to get any uniform stamp patterns going on distort them like I could see some here I'm just gonna kind of distort some of those but don't destroy your work there we go now you see how this looks like it's coming from us it's going that way up here and that's real deep in you can leave that sometimes we get caught doing this over the whole lot we're making it flat over flat over flat but we want to start flat and start adding dimension and bumps so it looks like it's coming towards you off your canvas towards you so you're getting that photographic realism that's a little bit bright there but try not to do that if you ever do do that you can always come back with the previous color and dull it down a bit so I'm just showing you a lot of detail on this side look now see that dark bit there this color it's important to know this this color comes right off and into that color there and like I said see up here it's a bit it needs a bit more we'll calm that down a bit right into that lighter color there one thing I do want to stress when you're doing this type of work as well is see the edge where it's meeting the sky or it might be in front of a rock. You want it very airy and open. I'm just going to show you in a little spot here. Okay, because I've done it before and I see other people and I go, oh my, if only um, we know how to fix that. So I'm going to show you in this video how you fix that. Now see my edges here, they're as open as I can be. And what you'll get is more of a realistic vibe of it, whether it's in front of a rock or over a sky there. See here how it's hairy and open. It looks better than a, a thick blob like that coming down your sky here like that. It just looks better. And if you go back and look at some past work, you might be able to see where you've done that. I know I've done it quite a bit. And you can, if you haven't varnished your work, you can, Pull an old painting out and modify it, revive it. Okay, I just want to show you now, watch what I do here. Because this side, we're sort of looking up at it compared to this side. I've left no highlight here and I've got like pretty much a main band there. So what I'm trying to achieve is the illusion where this is coming out, that's dunking in and then just maybe about here, I'll see how it's gonna look. I'll just start doing some more lighter stuff down here and coming right into that dark color again. But leaving that darker vibe there of that khaki green. And you can scratch in if you really want to, some branches in this dark bit, some dark gray brown branches if you wanted to. Now just to finish that, we've got our vibe going. It's all dry, it can be dry. Come back down to your pile and just pull out what's in your brush, that's enough, and start adding some more stronger vibe of the uh, cadmium yellow here. Just probably five to 15% of that footprint up there now on the canvas, I wanna highlight with this, not all over it. Very gingerly, watch this. I'm getting the light pushing things back and bringing things forward just over bits here and there and you can see how that's transformed it probably get some up here now if you like what I'm doing here give me a thumbs up and tell me in the comments tell me you love my bullshit Any unique comments I get, I give shout outs in my Friday Night Lives from now on. And if you're a member of my YouTube channel, you get shout outs when I'm painting live. I'm gonna have a look in the monitor. It's looking good. I, I want a little bit of window of light. Where are we? About here. Just popping through here. Look at that. 
Make it up as you go, it's fantastic. Now, now we're converting Harry Sphere's abstract painting to my style here. Now remember how I tried making that ridge and to come out? To get that more convincing, I'm putting a band of highlight along there and dribbling down to the bottom lower half. Just dribbling in front. Okay, that's done, but see here, simple fix up. I'll grab that darker color of that and just simply sit that back down, that big bright blob. That's what you can do when that happens. But dry your work first. Now just another thing I want you to notice after analyzing it, that long cloud that I put in there and see the way this has opened up, you've got a window, it's created distance in that sky. So instead of that sky looking flat on our canvas, we can look right in there and you can get lost in the distance. There's light years between here and there. <laughs> So back to Harry's, you can see that's abstract art. It's a beautiful painting by Harry Sphere. And we're converting ours to our own style, using his as a reference, okay? Now I'm grabbing my mixing brush, grabbing the cobalt blue and the quinacridone magenta. And I wanna make that color again, but I want it darker. So well, let's get a, enough of this to paint the bottom half. Uh, let's see where we go. Yeah, that's nice and dark. Look at that beautiful, eh? So what I want to do, you can grab any brush. I'm just using this one now because I've got it. And I'll gingerly bring this road up to where I want it. Getting rid of my little white spots there. And I'm going to attack this bit first. I can always bring the trees back. See, I put enough water in it so it's just moving off the brush onto the canvas and I want to stroke all this in this direction as I go so I didn't put craft white on it I don't need to this is just a blocking in color of the bottom of our painting here so I'll crisscross it in like so this is a good way to get paint onto a surface crisscross it in and then stroke the lines out of it like that okay and then just continue on Carefully does it. You can always bring the tree colours back if you've made a bit of a boo-boo. And then again, stroke the brush strokes out of it so you don't have big blobs in your work. Okay, there we go. We've got all the bottom blocked in. We can dry that now. Now I've dried it and I'm just looking for iffity affity bits that I can enhance get rid of the light bits because if you keep trying to do it when it's wet it keeps dragging like see along here i could see the two so i'm just going to fix that up a bit more with pizzazz it's what happens when i've analyzed it you could see and you go and fix it up as you go now if you want the patrons version of this tutorial hit the link below in the description the patrons become a patron and you get extra content and patrons get a patrons version of my tutorials which is more raw featuring little buddy and can have a few little iffity affity swear words in there as well so if you're into that sort of stuff become a patron and get extra patron content all right now we're gonna put the road our way. So to do it our way, we'll paint the road the road color because we've got a white line along the edge and then we'll house the road color with that white line. So I don't wanna put the white line on yet because it's not ready. So let's work out what color we're gonna have for the road. In Harry's one here, it's dark at the front and it's going light into the horizon there. His is complementing the sky and all that. So we'll make ours just somewhat gray type. So I'm mixing the grey into that khaki green colour we had and I thought that, that's, that's not a bad vibe. It's keeping the same colours. Okay, so we've got our cobalt blue and our yellow. We're going to mix that green up again and then get it, first we'll get it the green colour. Don't get the footprint so wide. Mixing and mixing and mixing. Alright, that's good. Now we're going to add the grey vibe. 
and then we'll start adding the grey vibe. So we'll get most of that into there. Because roads are sort of, this is, it's not, we're not going for realism, but we're going for a style, my style. Um, what I will do is grab some elephant tape. I call it elephant tape because everyone calls it frog tape and I like elephants. So we'll just cover our horizon line there, just like so. And we're gonna get a flat brush, uh, something you can push around and sort of distort. And what I mean by that is like, this is a good flat brush here, so I don't wanna distort and bugger that one up, but ones like this, they're already munted up. I can use something like this for this pushing in method. All right, so I'll use that one there. Pick up my paint. Now, I will add a bit of water with that, so we're gonna move a bit better off the brush onto the canvas. We want a bit of come up, 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 there. We want that reasonably straight, reasonably straight, and then the same here. We'll get that reasonably straight along here. Bang. And now we want to brush stroke this. In the direction of our road. I'll fix that edge up later, but. Okay, fix that up later. Now I want to stroke it this way. All the way out like this, all the way across the painting. I don't want to block it in the way I blocked in that purple colour because you'll get just a different vibe happening and you don't want that different vibe happening. Straight across there, straight down from the, that's the vanishing point there, right in that middle of the horizon line there. So you want all these brush strokes meeting up to there. Just so as if any brush strokes are left, they're forgivable. See, I'm getting every stroke. Now, I'm getting a bit of pasty, thick gunk there. I don't want too much of that, so be aware of that happening. Uh, you would have had it happen in work, and sometimes you don't mind it, but sometimes it might look a bit iffity affity. So be aware of that and stroke it out while you can. And we'll get an idea of how this colour is happening for our colour layout for this painting or how the vibe of it's all going. Yeah, we're getting there. I want to just sort of trim it up a bit. Like, just look at it. Look at it in the camera there. Where am I looking at? I want this bit here sort of brought together better than what it is. So I've given it a dry. We'll brighten up this bit here, let it coming into this colour, and then we'll darken that. So to brighten that up, I'm going to grab some of this colour, okay, in my brush, and then simply whatever's in my brush, okay, that'll build, just use this grey and use that as the highlight colour. Mixing it right around and have a look. I feel I need a bit more of the darker colour in it. I didn't need that much. Just to be safe, I'm grabbing a bit of masking tape just so as I can flush this colour on with confidence. So I'll just put that there. Follow that line somewhere about there-ish. Okay, that'll do. I can stroke that with confidence. I've got me lighter value paint here. And now, where are we? About, about here, or there to there. About there, I'm looking at it, yeah. So I'll just come down right across the edge there like that. Load your brush up again, come right across, where's that, about here. Hit there and pull away. And this can be abstracty, because what, what type I've gone for is sort of a mix between realism and abstracty where it's gonna suit the whole layout at the end of the day. Very happy with that. Now we'll just darken up the bottom piece. So what I'll do is I'll grab that red, the quinacridone magenta. 
I'll just try a little bit over here and just see if that darkens it up. So let's just see if that's making it darker. Oh no, let's try the blue and the purple then, that purpley colour into it. There we go. Not too much. Grab some more of the blue to get a darker vibe using these three colours still. There we go. Got some of the grey mixed with it. Okay, using that other brush again, I want to come about here and about to there. That's the arc I want. Okay, so I'll start from here and just pull it into that vanishing point. Coming, because this very edge bit, I want to keep dark. Now, got to say a big thank you to Harry Spears, whoever he is. I've just had this painting for many a years. A lot of people have asked did I do it, but I never did. So I'm doing my rendition of it now. Take the tape off, because there's some people out there, they love watching the tape being pulled off. So I'll just pull that off. And I want to dry that now so we can add our white lines. Okay, I've given that a dry, and to be confident again, I'm simply going to mask up the edge of the road again. Now this tape is a better quality painter's tape because it doesn't rip the paint off if you pull it off compared to the paper masking tape. This is sort of rubbery plasticky so it's a different adhesive and it just peels off better. I bought a big six pack of it for like 12 bucks. So mask it up any way you feel fit, otherwise you can just freehand it. I'm just masking it up for the tutorial's sake, so that I can just confidently put those lines in. I want to put those lines in, then I'll put the um, middle line in. Hopefully we don't get a, a weird line. Now the gap is going to come wider as it comes this way to a degree, not too much, but enough to give it perspective. I'll we'll use a firm knife just to cut that line there, there we go, and we'll get the other side and a bit wider as we come, come forth, said thee, come forth with what width, that'll do. So I'm going to grab me dagger brush and I want some of this white but I don't want it pure white because it'll look too cartoony and stark. So I'm, I'm tainting it with a bit of grey just to dull it down. But on the painting, it'll look white. Scratch it on. So it's kind of dry, but it's covering. And backwards and forwards that way, because if it was really runny, inky and wet, it can bleed under this tape. And you've got to make sure it's squashed on there as well. And we just need a a vibe of our white line there and once we take the tape off you'll be extremely happy with your results for those people who are not I mean I do not have the steadiest hands but now we'll just pull that tape off to see how she looks a hint with tape where you started putting it on if you start from that point pulling it off that lifts all the last pieces off that you did last in in general but that's when you're taping around a window or something. You'll see it did bleed a little bit there, but it's, it's okay. That's why I wanted to scratch it on. And we've got a reasonably confident line. But see, we've got some decent confident lines there. So once again, grab your masking tape. Harry's lines are finishing about here to the side of the painting, going straight up there. So we'll do that as well. So we'll grab our tape. From the middle of the road to there, so from about there, get that bottom point on and then get this contact on there. Now the width of your line, he's got it quite wide there, but right about there.
Now we're going to use the same white paint. So we're grabbing that paint again with a bit of grey in it. And you, you don't want these to all be the same length. You want them to be longer at front and then shorter. So we're going to come from about, where's the horizon line? My horizon line is that way, okay, on that angle. One about here, bang, and then we'll just confidently stroke that in with the white tinted with a bit of grey. This gap, same angle, but now we're gonna come a lot more shorter. Now that gap there, I wanna make it a little bit less than that. Whoa, we'll go on the right angle, see there? I nearly went dingle bearingly crooked and then go a little bit shorter with that one. Little, just little ones out there like that. Here. Okay, we're losing sharpness out there because it's a long way away. There we go, we've got a decent, oh my painting's coming off because I've only got two sides of tape holding it on because it's on the portrait layout. We've got a decent highway line in our road. See how easy that was? You can do that. And I want to thank all my patrons and YouTube members that support my content. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. <clears throat> Now my last painting I signed, I forgot to put Steve's footprint on it and someone reminded me of it and it was a good call. So we're just putting my distinct autograph on here. Now this painting and a lot of other my YouTube paintings are for sale. So if you want to buy any of my paintings, message me on Facebook, links in the description below. And of course Steve's little signature here. Okay, we'll whack a frame on that and see how she looks. Might not even need a frame. There we go, that's not too shabby. We've did our rendition of Harry Sphere's painting. Perspective going along there, but we've changed it up. And I've done it my way. And if you want to paint this painting with a bit of practice, if you're just starting, I know you can do it. All right, I had a lot of fun doing that. I hope you liked the show. And if you did, give me the thumbs up. Tell your friends if you like what I'm doing. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody. Also, check out this other video of mine. All the best, goodbye, good luck, and good on ya!